Hey guys, it's Miss Woodruff and Miss B again. Um, we're here going through clinical skills. As a general reminder, keep in mind that we're going to go show you the basic principles you know your instructor may require or ask different things of you. Um, so always be paying attention to their instructions. But today we're going to go over IV fluid administration. So that loud crackly bag that you just heard, we're going to see about what is the purpose of it. And when we're talking about this, we're not just talking about IV flus, we're talking about continuous um, medication therapy as well. So take it away, Miss B. So there's different reasons why a patient might need IV um, fluids or continuous IV, which not necessarily always is fluids. It could be a medication, it could be a drip, um, it could be a supplemental um, nutrition like TPN. But in for this video, we're going to talk about just fluids, like just continuous, let's say NS or normal saline or uh, lactarius ringers that is used for surgery, or maybe your fluid has a little bit of potassium or a little bit of sugar for the patient because they're NPO. But the principle is still the same. Why do we use fluids for patients? Well, sometimes it's hydration. Sometimes it's because we're going to supplement them with uh, maybe a little bit of um, mineral or um, electrolyte that they need or a little bit of sugar. But ultimately, you're trying to fix a problem. So what do we need to be careful with? Well, the first thing that you always want to uh, do in assess your patient before you start an IV is their IV. Make sure that their IV is patent, that it's not infiltrated, as well as while you're in the medication administration or having this continuous fluid, you want to make sure that you frequently check their IV to ensure that it's not infiltrated and their arm doesn't get super swollen. Um, then you're going to always do your tram, check your orders, make sure you have an order, that you understand what the fluid that you're giving to the patient is. Why am I giving this? Is there something that contraindicates with maybe something that you're running? Maybe perhaps this fluid is not being able to be given in the same line that you already have, may, let's say, blood being given. Uh, mm -hmm. So make sure that your line, you can give it or you can start it. Maybe you need to start a different line. Or perhaps you have a pick line that has two lumens and you're golden. You don't have to start a new IV. Then once you check your orders, you make sure you have your same patient, you check allergies, you check their name. Um, well, we got to get the supplies first. <laughs> so get your supplies first. So you need your, uh, excuse the noise, your IV bag. And it usually comes in this plastic, sometimes not necessarily this thin plastic. It's usually hard to open. Hard to open so you can just stir it or use your scissors if you have some. Uh, you're also going to need primary IV tubing. Let's talk about the tubing for a little bit. Uh, so we have two different types of tubing or actually four in total if we're going to go into depth in that. But we have primary tubing and we have secondary tubing. The primary tubing has the chamber spike. It's really long. It's usually longer than your secondary. Depending on the pump that your hospital uses, your look of it is going to look a little different. This is an Alaris primary tubing. So it has this clamp here that goes to the pump. It has white sides where you can um, infuse a medication or you can connect another tubing to it. And then it has the pore that goes to the patient and attaches. So on your secondary tubing that we're gonna show you in another video, you'll see that it's way much shorter than the primary tubing. So you get your tubing, you get your primary bag or IV fluids, you get alcohol, you get a saline flush, so you can flush your patient and that's it. Yeah, I believe that's it. So the first thing that you're gonna do is go into the patient's room, knock, do your hand hygiene, introduce yourself to the patient. You're gonna explain what you're doing or you're about to do and why, are, uh, why is the patient receiving fluids or whatever you are about to infuse. Then you're gonna identify the patient 
name, date of birth, and allergies. For the most part, not many patients, I don't think I've ever had one that is allergic to NS, but you will still, still consider a medication and we still have to assess allergies. Then you're gonna scan your medication, you're gonna compare it to your MAR, to your order. Every IV fluid, you're also going to find out what their rate is. So for example, NS or LR, usually a physician can give you an order of 50 mLs an hour, 100 mLs an hour, 125. If it's a medication, they might have a specific mLs an hour. Uh, so you always want to check that. From there, then you start checking at your packages to make sure that they're intact, that they that the fluid inside doesn't look cloudy or looks a little weird, that it is not normal. Then you open your package. We have one already open for you, just like this one. Um, then you want to look at expirations. Sometimes if uh, items are not used frequently in the hospital, they expire. So you never want to administer something that's just expired. You want to open your tubing. The thing with opening your tubing is that you want to untangle it. It comes like in a, in a kind of pretty tight fashion. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so just make sure you untangle it, you open it up, you straighten it up and then you get your two uh, without touching the floor, okay? Keep it sterile. Um, you wanna make sure you get the two ends, so the spike and the pore that goes to the patient. In the bag, this has a stopper normally, so you take out the stopper. Before you spike it, I always like my students to know to clamp first, so always get that clamp on first before you spike. That's my preference. Yes. Oh, I, I didn't know, I didn't hear you say that. I Oh, no, no, yes, for sure, for sure. And I guess I guess so, show them the different clamps because they might not know the difference between which yes. clamps. Yes, so um, on, on your tubing, here's two things. Before I get to the tubing and clamping and all on clamp, once you take this stopper um, out, some people spike up, some people spike down. It really doesn't matter which way you, you're spiking, whether it's up or down. You just want to make sure you're doing it right, not poking the back, no poking yourself. Um, so it could be either way. Now, on to the tubing. I apologize. Once you... Oh, I was going to say one more thing. is just that unless you're at TCC, because all TCC's bags have already been punctured. Yes. So always, like Miss B has in her hands, if you um, do not put that bag upside down, you will get a bath. Yeah. So, but in real life, they are closed off. <laughs> yes, in real life in the hospital, there's a stopper here and you can take it out and it won't spill on you. But here they've been already spiked. Now onto the tubing. Now you're gonna have a cap here that we don't have it because these tubings have been used. And you're also gonna have a cap right here on the port. Once you open it and untangle it, you wanna make sure you clamp. This is called a rolling clamp. So typically they come open. Open is all the way further to the wider side. Clamp it all the way to the skinnier side or the smaller part of the clamp. In the Laris pump, you have the blue clamp, which is right here. This also clamps the tubing, just like that. And in some tubings, you have a smaller clamp within um, the actual tube. This one in particular doesn't have it. I was just going to say, you don't have to clamp both of them. The blue clamp that she showed, it will be clamped automatically when you put it in the pump. So usually all you really need to do is just close the roller clamp. So close the roller clamp. Once you have ensured that the roller clamp is clamped, you carefully remove this cap um, and then holding it sterile, you're going to spike the bag. Again, this could be done up or down, twist and push, twist and push. It's a little hard once, it, once the bag is uh, new, it's a little hard to push. So don't be afraid to give it a little bit of muscle and just push and twist. Once that, you make sure you have your clamp, it's penetrated. You'll see it on the tip here. Then the next thing you do is Not drop the tubing. <laughs> don't drop the tubing, fill the chamber. Yeah. You want to fill it 
maybe about halfway, it's okay. Um, all the way to the top, I don't recommend it. Do you recommend that? No, I usually like about halfway that okay. way that I can see that it's um, dripping appropriately. Right. And this also tells me I spiked the bag well enough. Because if I can squeeze and get a fluid out, that shows me that I've spiked it. Correct. Right. So I typically do it halfway. Mm -hmm. And then from here, you're going to, I usually hang it. So I'm not holding the bag. Hang it on the pole. And then I'm going to prime uh, your tubing. How do you prime the tubing? Well, you prime it by opening your clam, your rolling clam, and letting it um, basically fill feet through the tubing with no bubbles um, it, within the tube. So let's do that. Now for like hand wise, I always like to have one hand on the clamp and then obviously one hand on the end of the tip. You wanna show them that by lowering the camera? Mm -hmm. So I have one hand on the roller, one hand on the tip holding it. You can do it over a sink. You can do it over the trash can. Um, just make sure that you keep, you keep this tip sterile. Now I have found um, that not necessarily you have to take the cap from here. It, the tube will prime with just untwisting it just a little bit, giving it enough air where it would um, prime. After that, oh, uh, real quick, I was just going to also say that um, with this kind of medication, you're not too worried if you have to let some of the fluid out, but if this is like a very important medication or pharmacy had to make it, you want to make sure you're not wasting too much. So really keep an eye as you're priming it so you're not wasting fluid. Okay. Mm -hmm. So the next thing is to put it in the pump, and I'm going to show you how to put it in the Alaris pump. Let's see if we can. So I call it, you're going to feed the tongue to the mouth. Mm -hmm. Blue on blue. Blue on blue. And then the tubing stretches to the top, right where it sits right in that hole right there. And so you're gonna have it straight, tongue in the mouth, and then right at the top, just laying it carefully there. Now this pumps, um, the door is a little bit hard, so you have to kind of push it in and then bring it down to close. That's been um, put in the pump, it's locked. Now the next step is connecting the patient, uh, your tubing to the patient. Make sure that you are cleaning for 15, 20 seconds with alcohol. You're verifying patency um, in your IV, make sure it's working correctly before um, you connect the patient. Then you connect it mm -hmm. and you program the pump. Now we're gonna show you in a minute how to turn the pump and what to do. Yeah, so the only thing I would say just for logistical sake is, is that um, personally for me, I'd like to, um, after I've like scanned the medicine, I'm sure this is the right patient, right medicine, everything. I like to set everything up in the pump before turning it on. Um, because if you, uh, if you turn on the pump early, it starts honking at you, beeping at you. It gets really annoying. It can get very distracting. Um, so I like to uh, like, you know, get everything connect, primed, connected in here, attached to the patient. You know, after, of course, I did my IV assessment, and everything, and then I turn on the pump that way I can do that separate. So that way I'm not kind of going in between technology and the patient. It can really stay focused on my task. So yeah, um, the only other thing I was going to mention is um, in the beginning when we were talking about reasons for um, these medications and things like that, um, that, that always keep in mind, it may seem like, hey, our compatibilities with this. Um, so it may seem like, hey, it's IV fluids, it's no big deal. Um, but keep in mind, even if it just looks like fluid, there could be potassium or something else in it. So when you're looking at compatibilities, you always need to check, okay, if it's fluids with potassium, I need to check if the whatever else I want to give with it is co um, compatible, not only with the fluid, but the potassium too. Um, and then also keep in mind that there's some stuff that we talk about, um, like blood administration, you can only give a normal saline, I can't give it with lactated ring or D5 or anything else. Um, so just because you have fluids doesn't necessarily mean you have um, normal saline. So you always want to check just what your fluid is. Um, and then after, um, I think, do you want to talk about follow-up? You know, kind of what are, what are we looking for for complications? So for complications, even though um, it's just fluid sometimes, uh, think about what we teach in cardiac uh, about your congestive heart failure patients. So when you are hydrating someone, 
or maybe this is their third bag within the hour because you are flushing fluids on them. You want to make sure that you assess their respiratory system, their intake and output, you balance it out to make sure that this fluid is actually coming out because the risk here is fluid overload. Um, and by checking their respiratory status, their vital signs, their blood pressure can go up, their intake and output balance, um, daily weight, daily weight, mm -hmm. you can actually um, basically identify if a patient is on fluid overload. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you always want to make sure it's also always working like that, that, that it's enough because maybe the patient, the doctor started at 50 mils per hour and the patient's still showing signs of dehydration. So always look, making sure that it's doing its job. Um, but most patients don't need to be on fluids forever. Um, so it's always looking about, um, you know, the necessity of it and making sure that, you know, there's that fine line. And it's really easy, even for a normal everyday patient, when someone's on bed rest, you easily accumulate fluids or it goes where it's not supposed to go. Um, so you just always never think that, hey, they're young, they're healthy, I don't need to worry about fluid overload. But yeah, mm -hmm. I think that's all I have in relation to IV fluids, unless you have anything else, Miss B. I think that's all we have. Okay. Um, are we going to show them how to turn the pump or another video? That will be another, another video. video. So, so yeah, so keep... look for the Alaris video to learn about how to turn on the pump and program the fluids. Okay, all we'll right. see you in the next video. See ya. Bye.